Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student working on diverter plasma physics and studying at the University of York whilst working at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Friday the 18th of November and I'm here to give you your Fusion News update. Stories today include 1. Despite conflict, Russia sends France giant magnet for nuclear fusion project. 2. Here's how supporting fusion energy today could solve tomorrow's winter heating woes. 3. Nuclear fusion experiment reveals unexpected physics inside burning plasma. 4. Magnets might be the future of nuclear power. And 5. Nuclear fusion power edges from fantasy to reality. And as always, there'll be some bonuses at the end as well. 1. Despite conflict, Russia sends France giant magnet for nuclear fusion project. Our first story today is both a huge relief for the fusion community and an interesting story about international relations. And that's because this story from physics.org covers the announcement that Russia has completed and sent off its poloidal field coil to the ITER project. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the ITER project is the largest tokamak in the world under construction in France. And it requires six poloidal field coils for plasma shaping and stability. Now, out of these, four are being built on site in France. One is being built by China, and the final coil was the responsibility of Russia and is set to be shipped off in May of this year. Of course, in February of this year, Russia invaded Ukraine, and the diplomatic fallout of this conflict led to ties being cut between Russia and many international organizations and agreements. This brought into question whether Russia would stay as a contributing member of the EDER organization, and whether it would deliver the necessary poloidal field coil. Thankfully, Russian scientists continue to make contributions to the ITER project, with Russia Tom representative Vyacheslav Perchukov saying that the current situation did not change the fact that we will fulfill our obligations. Indeed, the Russian poloidal field coil has now left port and has started on its long journey to France. This story shows just how unique the ITER project is. It was proposed as a groundbreaking collaboration between the US and the USSR during the Cold War in 1985, and remains one of the few collaborations between Russia and the West after the invasion of Ukraine. Two, here's how supporting fusion energy today could solve tomorrow's winter heating woes. Our second story today comes from the World Economic Forum and discusses the role fusion may have in solving future energy crises. And to contextualize this, the article first talks about the current energy crisis, where reduced gas supplies from Russia due to the Ukraine crisis has led to spiking of fuel prices and consequently on energy bills for the average consumer. In Ireland, for example, average energy bills are expected to rise to 600 euros per month this winter. So, to avoid significant fluctuations in energy prices in the future, the article argues we need to move away from resource-dependent fuel such as oil and gas towards heating homes using electrical heat pumps. Of course, the electricity to power these pumps will still have to come from somewhere, and here is where fusion may fit in, since it has the potential to be extremely steady, reliable, and independent of geopolitics or resources. Now, companies like Fusion Industry Association member TAE Technologies are making great progress and promise a reactor in the 2030s, but the article argues that we should continue to invest even more into fusion right now because the money we invest now will be money saved to preventing the next energy crisis we will undoubtedly face unless we move away from geopolitically dependent energy supplies. Three, nuclear fusion experiment reveals unexpected physics inside burning plasma. Our third story, very exciting story today, comes from Vice and centers around the National Ignition Facility, or NIF for short, which, if you remember, uses 192 high-intensity laser beams to compress fuel capsules to try and achieve efficient nuclear fusion. Now, those familiar to our channel will know that NIF has been in the news a lot recently with some record-breaking fusion energy gain shots and for the first time achieving an ignited plasma in the lab. But this article dives into some recent physics discoveries from those ignited shots. The discovery, published in Nature Physics on Monday, was of a superthermal distribution of ions, which essentially means that some of the particles in the plasma were a lot hotter and more energetic than expected. This discovery shows that the new regime of ignition that the NIF can now reach opens a door to unexplored physics that will be necessary to understand in order to achieve reliable and efficient inertially confined fusion. But as a scientist myself, I must say that apart from being one step closer to fusion, 
It's also interesting that an ignited plasma just opens up doors to new areas of physics in general. Four, magnets might be the future of nuclear power. Our fourth story today is a very intriguing technical piece from Popular Science on the strong effect that magnetic fields may have on inertial confinement fusion. Now, the article, like the last one, also focuses on the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, but focuses on some new ideas the NIF is trying out to increase the fusion energy output of their shots even further than the record-breaking ones they had last year. One of these ideas is magnetizing the fuel pellet and the small metal chamber surrounding the fuel pellet known as the hull ramp. Simulations show the presence of this magnetic field in the fuel can increase fusion efficiency significantly, and preliminary low power shots show an increase in fusion energy of a factor two when the fuel is pre-magnetized versus when it isn't. I personally think this is really exciting stuff, and I hope it's one step on the road to NIF achieving more record-breaking fusion gains in the future. And five, nuclear fusion power edges from fantasy to reality. Our final story is from the Financial Times and is a great overview piece on the overall progress of fusion. In particular, the article highlights the fantastic results achieved by some public projects recently, projects like the National Ignition Facility, which created a ignited fusion plasma for the first time, or JET, which achieved a record-breaking fusion energy output for a tokamak earlier this year. The article also discusses the acceleration of fusion progress through private fusion companies, such as Fusion Industry Association members First Light Fusion and Tokamak Energy. Collectively, private fusion raised over $2.8 billion globally over the last year alone. Now, another important aspect of fusion technology that the article highlights is about safety and regulation. And since many of the proposed methods of fusion use tritium as fuel, which is moderately radioactive, However, because there's no high-level radioactive waste, fusion in the UK will be regulated by the Environment Agency and the Health and Safety Executive rather than the nuclear regulator. And this will help accelerate the development of fusion, especially in the UK. Right, well, that's all the main stories today. And for our bonuses, I have two bonus stories to finish this off today. The first comes from Computer Weekly. And for all those coding and computer nerds out there, like myself, uh, I find it's a great dive into the role of simulation and digital engineering tools in Fusion and discusses really interesting technologies like digital twins. The second story comes from the fantastic channel on YouTube. I'm sure many of you know of them, the B1M which this year named the Eater Project, the fusion project in France, as their construction story of the year. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free, as always, to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. We really appreciate your continued support. Of course, as always, if any of these stories interested you in particular, their links will be in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.